GHS 103 that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We're asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of the Prophet Ezekiel. The Book of the Prophet Ezekiel. Chapter 43. Chapter 43. Afterward he brought me to the gate, even the gate that looketh toward the east. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel came from the way of the east. And his voice was like a noise of many waters, and the earth shined with his glory. And it was according to the appearance of the vision which I saw, even according to the vision that I saw when I came to destroy the city. And the visions were like the vision that I saw by the river Kibar, and I fell upon my face. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate whose prospect is toward the east. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house, and the man stood by me. And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne, and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever, and my holy name, shall the house of Israel no more defile, neither they nor their kings by their whoredom, 
nor by the carcasses of their kings in their high places, in their setting of their threshold by my thresholds, and their post by my posts, and the wall between me and them. They have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed. Wherefore I have consumed them in mine anger. Now let them put away their whoredom, and the carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. Thou son of man, show the house to the house of Israel, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and let them measure the pattern. And if they be ashamed of all that they have done, show them the form of the house, and the fashion thereof, and the goings out thereof, and the comings in thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and all the forms thereof, and all the laws thereof, and write it in their sight, that they may keep the whole form thereof, and all the ordinances thereof, and do them. This is the law of the house. Upon the top of the mountain, the whole limit thereof round about shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the house. And these are the measures of the altar after the cubits. The cubit is a cubit and a hand breadth. Even the bottom shall be a cubit, and the breadth a cubit, and the border thereof by the edge thereof round about shall be a span. And this shall be the higher place of the altar. And from the bottom upon the ground even to the lower settle shall be two cubits, and the breadth one cubit. And from the lesser settle even to the greater settle shall be four cubits, and the breadth one cubit. So the altar shall be four cubits, and from the altar and upward shall be four horns. And the altar shall be twelve cubits long, twelve broad, square in the four squares thereof. And the settle shall be fourteen cubits long, and fourteen broad in the four squares thereof. And the border about it shall be half a cubit, and the bottom thereof shall be a cubit about. And his stairs shall look toward the east. And he said unto me, Son of man, thus saith the Lord God, These are the ordinances of the altar in the day when they shall make it, to offer burnt offerings thereon, and to sprinkle blood thereon. And thou shalt give to the priests the Levites that be of the seed of Zadok, which approach unto me to minister unto me, saith the Lord God, a young bullock for a sin offering. And thou shalt take of the blood thereof, and put it on the four horns of it, and on the four corners of the settle, and upon the border round about. Thus shalt thou cleanse and purge it. Thou shalt take the bullock also of the sin offering, and he shall burn it in the appointed place of the house, without the sanctuary. And on the second day thou shalt offer a kid of the goats without blemish for a sin offering, and they shall cleanse the altar as they did cleanse it with the bullock. When thou hast made an end of cleansing it, thou shalt offer a young bullock without blemish, and a ram out of the flock without blemish. And thou shalt offer them before the Lord, and the priests shall cast salt upon them, and they shall offer them up for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Seven days shalt thou prepare every day a goat for a sin offering. They shall also prepare a young bullock and a ram out of the flock without blemish. Seven days shall they purge the altar and purify it, and they shall consecrate themselves. And when these days are expired, it shall be that upon the eighth day and so forward, the priests shall make your burnt offerings upon the altar and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, saith the Lord God. Chapter 44 Then he brought me back the way of the gate of the outward sanctuary, which looketh toward the east, and it was shut. Then said the Lord unto me, This gate shall be shut, it shall not be opened, and no man shall enter in by it because the Lord, the God of Israel, hath entered in by it. Therefore it shall be shut. It is for the prince. The prince, he shall sit in it to eat bread before the Lord. He shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate, and shall go out by the way of the same. Then brought he me the way of the north gate before the house. And I looked, and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord. And I fell upon my face. 
And the Lord said unto me, Son of man, mark well, and behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears all that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord, and all the laws thereof. And mark well the entering in of the house, with every going forth of the sanctuary. And thou shalt say to the rebellious, even to the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, O ye house of Israel, let it suffice you of all your abominations, in that ye have brought into my sanctuary strangers, uncircumcised in heart, and uncircumcised in flesh, to be in my sanctuary, to pollute it. Even my house, when ye offer my bread, the fat and the blood, and they have broken my covenant because of all your abominations. And ye have not kept the charge of mine holy things, but ye have set keepers of my charge in my sanctuary for yourselves. Thus saith the Lord God, No stranger uncircumcised in heart nor uncircumcised in flesh shall enter into my sanctuary of any stranger that is among the children of Israel. And the Levites that are gone away far from me when Israel went astray, which went astray away from me after their idols, they shall even bear their iniquity. Yet they shall be ministers in my sanctuary, having charge at the gates of the house, and ministering to the house. They shall slay the burnt offering and the sacrifice for the people, and they shall stand before them to minister unto them because they ministered unto them before their idols and caused the house of Israel to fall into iniquity. Therefore have I lifted up mine hand against them, saith the Lord God, and they shall bear their iniquity. And they shall not come near unto me to do the office of a priest unto me, nor to come near to any of my holy things in the most holy place. But they shall bear their shame and their abominations which they have committed. But I will make them keepers of the charge of the house, for all the service thereof, and for all that shall be done therein. But the priests, the Levites, the sons of Zadok, that kept the charge of my sanctuary when the children of Israel went astray from me, they shall come near to me to minister unto me, and they shall stand before me to offer unto me the fat and the blood, saith the Lord God. They shall enter into my sanctuary, and they shall come near to my table to minister unto me, and they shall keep my charge. And it shall come to pass that when they enter in at the gates of the inner court, they shall be clothed with linen garments, and no wool shall come upon them, whiles they minister in the gates of the inner court and within. They shall have linen bonnets upon their heads, and shall have linen breeches upon their loins. They shall not gird themselves with anything that causeth sweat. And when they go forth into the utter court, even into the utter court to the people, they shall put off their garments wherein they ministered, and lay them in the holy chambers. And they shall put on other garments, and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments. Neither shall they shave their heads, nor suffer their locks to grow long. They shall only pull their heads. Neither shall any priest drink wine when they enter into the inner court. Neither shall they take for their wives a widow, nor her that is put away. But they shall take maidens of the seed of the house of Israel, or a widow that had a priest before. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane, and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. And in controversy they shall stand in judgment, and they shall judge it according to my judgments, and they shall keep my laws and my statutes in all mine assemblies and they shall hallow my Sabbaths. And they shall come at no dead person to defile themselves, but for father, or for mother, or for son, or for daughter, for brother, or for sister that hath had no husband, they may defile themselves. And after he is cleansed, they shall reckon unto him seven days. And in the day that he goeth into the sanctuary, unto the inner court, to minister in the sanctuary, he shall offer his sin offering, saith the Lord God. And it shall be unto them for an inheritance. I am their inheritance. And ye shall give them no possession in Israel. I am their possession. They shall eat the meat offering and the sin offering and the trespass offering. And every dedicated thing in Israel shall be theirs. And the first of all the first fruits of all things and every oblation of all 
of every sort of your oblations shall be the priests. Ye shall also give unto the priest the first of your dough, that he may cause the blessing to rest in thine house. The priests shall not eat of anything that is dead of itself, or torn, whether it be fowl or beast. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes, we should pity the man in this world who must use the earth for a bed. And I guess we should pity the man who must toil from dawn till dust falls bread. But this can be reached if they have contentment and sharing for salvation plan but if you know any who don't they have plenty I must then pity the man A builder who builds all the sand. For a king to be saved is a thing. If it's lost, then pity the man. I guess there are those who pity. The saved as though they were missing life's best, forgetting the treasures of it pass away 
and that heaven's the place to be rest. Oh, meanwhile, I see me, the man who is scheming to hold up the wealth that he can. But if while he's living to God is not giving, he is so and pity the man. Pity the man who has treasures to hold, and he goes on the tears of his crown. Oh, pity the man, though he lived long on it, and he knows not the giver of life. Traveler, merchant, a builder who build on the sand. Papa rocking to be saved is the thing. Lost can pity the man. Giver of life, Praise the Lord. Give me a good hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The favor of the Lord be upon everyone. Yeah. And may this be a special miracle delivery Sunday for you in Jesus' name. As we have said before, and as I say specially for you today, you will never be the same again. Yeah. Heaven will descend on you. Yeah. The power of God will envelope you. Yeah. And every good thing that ought to be done will be done in your life. Yeah. In my life, yeah. it will be done. Yeah. Father, we thank you today and we bless your name. What a glorious Sunday, a happy Sunday. A miracle delivery Sunday. And I pray you deliver the parcel for everyone. Deliver to each one in Jesus' name. Amen. And I pray we will not come here in vain. Amen. Everything we need from your word, you transfer into our lives. And great will be a victory, a deliverance. A dominion, a rejoicing, a revelation in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. God bless you. You can sit down in the blessing of the Lord. As you have noticed, if you were here early, we learned and studied about John the Baptist. And then he introduced and presented Jesus to us, the very Son of God, a Savior, a Redeemer, 
a great librator. I'm going back to John. I do a little of John the Baptist. I do a little of John the Beloved. And then I'll come to their combined revelation. John the Baptist, John the Beloved, introducing Jesus, the very Son of God, and the great one, the great librator who has come to liberate you, liberate your family, liberate our whole state here, and liberate everyone who comes in our country, Nigeria, and liberate everyone in Africa and beyond Africa. Something good is coming your way. I'm talking to you today on receiving our liberator's fullness. The liberator, he has the fullness. Whatever you have got, you have not got enough. Revealing and receiving our liberator's fullness presented by his forerunner. His forerunner, that's John the Baptist. Look at your Bible, John chapter 1. We're looking at verse 15. In John chapter 1, verse 15, John bear witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. You understand? John the Baptist came into the world about six months before Christ, before Jesus came into the world. And yet he said, he was before me. That's the one that had been from all eternity. Before John the Baptist was created. That's why he said, he's the eternal one. He's the everlasting one. He has been before me in all eternity. And now he became the forerunner on earth. And then he says in verse 16, he says, and of his fullness, have we all received grace for grace. Everything we get from the Lord, we get from Christ, the liberator. And the says of his fullness, have we all received. You are going to receive of that fullness even today in Jesus' name. And then in verse 17, it says, For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Receiving a liberator's fullness presented by his forerunner. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, number one, the foundation of the ministry of John. When we talk about John the Baptist, his ministry at foundation. And when you look at that foundation, you begin to ask yourself, if you're a minister, what's the foundation of my ministry? And then if you're a member of the church, I mean the church of the living God, not just a denomination, you begin to ask, what's the foundation of the ministry that the Lord has called me to? The foundation of the ministry of John. Number two, the failure of some may touch by John. John had followers, and John mentored them. He mended them. He monitored them, and John gave the message to them, and yet some of them, they were mentored by John, but they had some deficiencies. I'll tell you when we get there. Number three, the fullness of the miracles of Jesus. As we come here today, that's the final point. We're looking at the fullness of and all the plenitude, how plenty it is, how much it is, the plenitude and the fullness of the miracles of John. You'll be a partaker. I will be a partaker. What are you? I cannot hear you. I will be a partaker. You'll be a partaker of the fullness of the miracles of Jesus, even this time in Jesus' name. Number one, we're looking at number one, and it is the foundation of the ministry of 
John. Look at Luke chapter 1. And Luke chapter 1, we're looking at verse 13. Here is when the angel came and the angel declared unto the father. He said, Elizabeth, your wife, will conceive and bear a son. And the name of that son shall be called John. He was named even before that child was born. And he said, the name shall be called John. Look at that in verse 16 now. And look at the foundation of his ministry. Look at what the angel said. Coming from God, revealing what ministry John will have. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. Many of the children of Israel shall join by preaching, shall join by ministering, shall join by declaring, shall join going before Christ and revealing what Christ will do. Many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God as you compare your part in the world, your place in the world, your ministry, your message in the world, were well, that of John, the intention of the Lord. If he sends you to do anything, the intention of the Lord as he sends you to do something is to turn the people away from darkness to light, away from what they were to what they ought to be and turn them to the Lord their God their creator and then he tells us in verse 17 it says and he that's John shall go before me in the spirit and power of Elias of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, they'll be made just by Christ, the justifier. They'll be turned around by the transforming power of Christ. And then the disobedient will become obedient in the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. That is the very foundation of the ministry of John. Let me break that down to three parts. Number one, the foundation of John's ministry. Number two, the fervency in John's ministration. Number three, the forthrightness of John's message. Look at number one there. Number one, the foundation of John's ministry, actually. Isaiah had prophesied about John. And you need to go back to the prophecy in the Old Testament. Malachi also prophesied about John. Let's just look at Malachi chapter 4, and I'm looking at verse 5. It says, Behold, I will send Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And then in verse 6, it tells us what that man will do. It says, he shall turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. As you become a minister of the Lord, and as you become a member of the body of Christ, you ought to be thinking about the purpose, about the reason why God made you a minister or made you a member. It is, if you're a minister, it is that God will use you. And then you will turn the hearts of sinners unto the Savior. And sinners will be converted, they'll be transformed, they'll become saints, and they will follow after the path of the very Son of God. Not only that, if you remember, you know that the Lord has sent ministers to you, preachers to you, pastors to you, leaders to you, so that your heart can be turned towards God and your mind. 
and your heart and your life will be focused on obedience to the Lord. That's why he came and that's why we have come. I believe that foundation of God that standeth sure. Having the seal that everyone that names the name of the Lord as a minister, everyone that names the name of the Lord as a, as a member will turn away from all iniquity. Be fulfilled in our lives in Jesus' name. Look at number two here, the fervency of John's ministration. John, when he came... And he ministered. He wasn't ministering like, you know, he was sleeping on the job. He was already tired and weary. And then he was drowsy. And he was almost, you know, dreaming, daydreaming. But he came, he came as a flame of fire. He came with fervency. He came with fire burning in his heart, burning in his soul, and burning in his body. If we're going to carry him. The transforming power and the transforming message of the Lord we carry it with the fervency within. Look at John chapter 5, verse 33. He said unto John, and he bear record, and he bear witness unto the truth. How did he bear witness unto the truth? Look at verse 35. It says, He was a burning and a shining light. He, John, he the carrier of the message of repentance towards the Lord. He, the forerunner of the Lord Jesus Christ, it was a burning light. And ye we were willing for a season to rejoice in his light. In the fulfillment of uh, Psalm 104, reading from verse 4. The fulfillment on John. And the fulfillment on you as you come to the Lord and you get to the altar of the Lord. And at that altar of the Lord, God does something in your heart and in your life. And he sends you with a message, the revelation of the gospel of Christ. You take that to the world like a flame of fire. Psalm 104, reading from verse 4, who maketh his angel spirits. And his ministers, a flaming fire. Number three here. As you come to number three, we're looking at the forthrightness of John, of John's message. In Matthew chapter three, reading from verse seven, here is direct message. And when John preached, he wasn't looking away from the people, afraid of them. When John preached, he was not looking down as if the faces of the people terrified him. He came to rescue them. He came to save them. He came to snatch them out of the fire and to bring them into the love of God. See how he was forthright in presenting his message to them. Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, psychologists will tell you, you don't speak directly like that to people. But that psychology, the Holy Ghost that indwelt that man. The Holy Ghost that enveloped that man. The Holy Ghost that saturated that man and empowered him and energized him. When those people came, he told them exactly what the God of heaven wanted them to hear. And he said, oh generation of vipers, by the way, do you remember? We just read now. Some of the words of Jesus Christ to the Pharisees and to the Sadducees in a Bible reading. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 23, O generation of vipers, he was the forerunner, John, and Jesus was the one being presented. And you find the same spirit and the same forthrightness in John and Jesus. O generation of vipers, how? 
will you escape the damnation of hell and hear John without missing words and John without being afraid and John without modifying the message and John without adulterating the message he said oh generation of vipers who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come and then in verse 8 it says bring forth therefore fruits meet for repentance it said repentance must not be superficial repentance must not be shallow repentance must not be plastic repentance must not just be sunday sunday there are prima that you use it is something that gets into your soul and gets into your heart and then the very depth of your heart is dug up and all the dirty things there they come to the surface and you confess and you forsake and it says you bring forth fruit meet for repentance and then he said in verse 9 it says and think not to say within yourself that man was forthright that man was clear you couldn't misinterpret or misplace what he was saying he said don't say this where we have abraham to our father for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And then in verse 10, it says, And now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is skewed down and cast into the fire exactly what christ came to preach later when christ began his ministry and he said you will see people coming from the east and from the west from the north from the south they will come into the kingdom but you the children of the kingdom will be cast into the lake of fire he wanted them to understand it's the same condition of repentance and the same condition of believing of the lord jesus christ that will get them to the kingdom number one he had a foundation you must have a foundation number two he was fervent you must be fervent for the lord too and then he was forthright and the grace that john had which is available for everyone of his fullness and we all receive grace for grace that grace will come upon your life I said that grace will come upon your life. Let's look at point number two there. Point number two, the failure of some mentored by John. Now, can you imagine a fervent preacher, a faithful preacher, a forthright preacher? He had some people that followed him. And the prediction, the prophecy about him is that he will turn the hearts of the children to their fathers and the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children of Israel unto God. And yet, let's look at some followers. As I talk about the failure of some mentored by John, there are three things we're looking at. Number one, the powerful dynamite in John. Number two, the powerless disciples of John. Number three, the privileged disciple of John. Let's look at number one there, the powerful dynamite in John. Already we have read Luke chapter 1, verse 13, where the angel mentioned his name. We have read verse 15 where it says, you know, what John will be, what he will even eat, how he will be clothed. We read verse 17, how he will turn the hearts of the people in the nation, turn them unto God. Uh, let's now see the dynamite in him. It tells us in Matthew chapter 3. And reading there from verse 11, Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, it says, I indeed baptize you with water 
unto repentance. But he that cometh after me, that Jesus, that's the Savior, that's the liberator, that comes after me, is mightier than I, who shoes I am not worthy to, to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And we're told that Holy Ghost was in him even from his mother's womb. And the Holy Ghost was in the father, Zechariah, as well as in the mother. And that was the dynamite, the Holy Ghost, in the life, in the ministry of John. I pray that dynamite will be in you. You shall receive power. You shall receive dynamite. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me. He was a witness, a book witness. Because of the dynamite of the Holy Ghost within him. And ye shall bear witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria. And to the uttermost part of the earth. If you don't get any other thing in this meeting this morning. I pray you will get this. That that dynamite will enter and penetrate in your soul. In your spirit. In your personality. Like it did for John in Jesus name let's look at number two there now and number two is the powerless disciples of john look at um, acts chapter 19 reading from verse 1 acts chapter 19 verse 1 and it came to pass that while apollos was at corinth paul having passed through the upper coast came to ephesus and finding certain disciples. And then he noticed something about them. Look at verse 2. He asked them a question. And he said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost? Since you believed, he saw those disciples at Ephesus. They were disciples of John when he was still alive. And then uh, at John, at uh, Paul saw them, they were dull. As he saw them, uh, they were sluggish. As he saw them, uh, they were cold. As he saw them, they were lethargic. As he saw them, uh, they were acting tired. And it's like they were tolerating the Christian life. They were not really up and doing and they were not running the race that was set before them with assurance and he questioned them hey something is missing here have you received the dynamite the power the fire the holy ghost since you believe look at what they said they said we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. They were not listening. They were following John. But they did not listen to everything John said. And sometimes you cannot even blame a minister. He has declared. He has publicized. He has preached like John. John said, I indeed baptize so with water unto repentance but i'm just a foreigner there's one coming after me he will baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire and these people that were following john they said we never heard they were in the meeting they never heard they took pride in following john they never heard they took pride in the fact we were baptized by John the Baptist. And they said they never heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Sometimes you see a member of a particular church. And you see the lie. Dull, sluggish, not upright, not righteous. And you say, what member of church are you of? And then you say, I'm a member of such and such a church. 
Then you make a conclusion. You say, they're not telling them of repentance there. How do you know? They're not telling them about righteousness there. How do you know? They're not telling them about living for Christ in the strength, in the power of the Holy Ghost. How do you know? These people were following after Jonah and John spoke about the Holy Ghost and they spoke about Jesus and they said, I didn't know. But he that sent me baptizing told me, on whomever you see that Holy Ghost in the form of a dove descending in, that is my only begotten Son. Introduce him to the people. He shall baptize them with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And these disciples said, we never heard. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, he said unto them, unto what then? Were ye baptized? And they said proudly, and they said confidently, and they said assuredly, we were baptized unto John's baptism. But you didn't listen. And those of us who are here, don't say you have never heard of the Holy Ghost that will convict you of sin. Don't say you have never heard of the Holy Ghost that will drive you on your knees and make you to repent. Don't say you have never heard of the Holy Ghost that will bear witness in your heart after you have repented and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ that you are now a child of God. Don't say that you have not heard of the Holy Ghost that the Lord gives unto his own disciples unto his own followers and the love of God is spread abroad by the Holy Ghost in us that he has given unto us you have heard they heard but they didn't have power you will have power I will have more power I will have more power it is yours today in Jesus name Look at number three there. Number three there, the privileged disciple of John. We're looking at Acts chapter 18, and I'm looking at verse 24. In Acts chapter 18, verse 24, and a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. Verse 25, he said, This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only, knowing only, Knowing only the baptism of John. There is another disciple of John. And this one was privileged. He got something from John the Baptist. The fervency of spirit. He got that one. And then the fearlessness before the people. He got that one. But it was limited. If John had died now, look at this. This is Acts chapter 18. And we have come all the way through. And we have come beyond 10 years after John had died. After Christ died. After Christ rose from the dead. And the man, Apollos, never went beyond all that he had from John those many years back. No growth. No forward movement. And if he hears anything new, anything challenging, if he hears about Acts chapter 2, when the people were sitting together, and they were all in one accord, and the wind came, and then the sound, and the fire, like a tongues fell upon them, and they began to speak in new tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. If he had anything like that, he said, that's new, I'm of the old school, John. In Acts of the Apostle chapter 3, Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but this one thing I have, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise 
so up and walk. When Apollos had that, he said, I hear that on his knee. All I know is what John said more than 10, 15 years ago. And when he comes, said to uh, Acts chapter 4, there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Only the name of Jesus, Apollos said, I don't know about that. All I know is the baptism of John. He comes to Acts chapter 5, and then Peter was walking, and a shadow coming upon the people that were sick, laid on the streets. He said, I never heard about that one from John. Whatever I did not hear from John, I'm not going to accept. He was limited, knowing only the baptism of John. But thank God he was open. Thank God you are open. I said, thank God you are open. Don't you think heaven has more than what you have now? You are born again. You are saved. You are a child of God. And you are moving on. You believe the Bible from cover to cover. Has all the, have all the promises been fulfilled in your life? Have all the prophecies be fulfilled in your life? That was the situation of John. But thank God it was open. We're told in verse 26, in verse 26, here we're told about what happened. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them, and they expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. He didn't say, thank you, keep what you have. I'm a disciple of John, I have enough. He didn't say that, you know, as you learn from other people, as you learn from the greater revelation giving to other people and they're kind enough and they're good enough and they're loving enough to bring you to themselves you'll be as open as apollos in jesus name they explained and they exalted and they exposed and expounded the way of the lord unto him more perfectly. I pray the Lord will perfect the revelation he has come to bring to you in Jesus' name. Let's look at point number three now. Point number one, we've seen John the Baptist and we've seen him the foundation, the fervency, and the forthrightness. Now, we've seen some of the disciples of John and we've seen their limitation. Now we come to point number three. And point number three is the fullness of miracles of the miracles of Jesus. Thank God for the miracles you have got. But there is more. Thank God for the impartation you have got. But there is more. Thank God for all the privileges you have. But there is more. Somebody say there is more. Somebody shout, there is more. More for me. As a minister, more for me. As a member, more for me. As a child of God, more for me. Now, John, the beloved, has given us the gospel according to St. John. And the gospel according to St. John has revealed the miracles of Christ. Look at chapter 1. Chapter 1, he tells us in John 1 verse 12. It says, But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. As many as received him, he gave the power to become the sons of God. That's the miracle of spiritual sonship. The miracle of spiritual sonship. And that miracle can be yours today. Look at verse 16. In verse 16 of his fullness, 
Have we all received grace for grace? And then John points them in verse 29. The next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold, the Lamb of God, we take away the sin of the world. Every sin in your life, every little, every big, every habitual, every prevailing sin, the Lord will take away in Jesus' name. The miracle of spiritual sonship. Look at chapter 2. Chapter 2, we're looking at verse 3. It says, And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus says unto him, They have no wine. Look at verse 5. In verse 5, his mother says unto the servants, Whatsoever. He says unto you, do it. And then Jesus told them to fill the water pots, and without doing anything external, he said, draw it out now and take to the master of the ceremony. And in on the way, that thing had been turned to wine. We call that supernatural supply. Supernatural supply. They eat up the wine. They needed the wine. And then Jesus Christ, the miracle worker, it's coming to your life today. I said it's coming to your life today. Supernatural supply in your life in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 3 there. Chapter 3 from verse 14 is saying, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Then in verse 15, it says that whosoever, whosoever, Thank God you are here today. I said, thank God you are here today. Something supernatural is coming upon your way. That thing symbolized by that serpent that was lifted up and all their sicknesses, all their sins, everything went away. Total liberation for you today in Jesus' name. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Number three, that is the symbolic serpent. The symbolic serpent. That serpent that was lifted up symbolizing the Lord Jesus Christ that will be lifted up on the cross and then every problem you have because of the uplifted Christ, every problem is solved in Jesus' name. Chapter 4, we're coming to chapter 4 now, verse 10. In chapter 4, verse 10, and Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and uh, he that says unto thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have given, would have asked of him, and he will give you, he would have given thee the living waters. And then the conversation continued, and eventually the woman had that salvation, a Samaritan. And then you say, come see a man that told me everything I ever did. Is this not the Christ? And it came all of them, and he said, now, not just because you have said it, we have heard him ourselves, and we know, and we believe, and we experience that this is the savior of the world. Number four, the Samaritan salvation. Samaritan salvation. We're looking at chapter 5 now. Chapter 5. We're looking at John chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 8. Jesus said unto him, Rise and take up thy bed and walk. This man had been an invalid, incurable, for 38 years. And he was at the pool waiting for an angel to come from heaven and then to trouble the water. And then somebody will take the first person and land him in the water. And the first person that gets there will be made whole. And he said, I have no man when the water is troubled to take me and put me in the pool. And Jesus said, rise up. The lame will rise up. The paralyzed will rise up. You've been there, an invalid for 30 years, 40 years, no matter how many years, when the word of the prince and when the power of the prince comes upon you today, you will rise up in Jesus' name. Rise up. Take up thy bed and walk. And then in verse 9, we're told in verse 9, and immediately, somebody shout, immediately. 
the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day that was the Sabbath day. That is the sick succored. The sick succored. He was healed. He was held. He was lifted up by the supernatural power of the Lord. Come to chapter 6 now. Chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 35. In chapter 6, verse 35, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. And he says in verse 48, verse 48, I am the bread of life. He was, he is today, it will ever be. I am to you today as you are hungry for the power of God in your life. He says, I'm still here. I am the bread of life. In verse 51, he tells us, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. You will live forever. And the bread that I will give him is my flesh. It was going to be sacrificed for us, which I will give for the life of the world. And then he tells us in verse 58, <clears throat> verse 58, it says, This is that bread that came down from heaven, not as your fathers did each manna, and they are all dead. But then it says, He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. That's you. Say, that's me. That's you. You will live in his life forever in Jesus' name. And then he clears it for us. He tells us it's not the literal flesh. Look at verse 63. In verse 63, Look at what it says. It says, It is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, their spirit and their life. And as you receive that word, believe that word, accept that word, personalize that word, and know that it is yours, it will bring life in you in Jesus' name. That's for soul satiation, soul satisfaction. It will satisfy your soul. You take that bread of life, every morning you eat of that bread, every day you eat of that bread, you'll be energized every day of your life in Jesus' name. Look at chapter 7, verse 37. In chapter 7, verse 37, on, in the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man, no partiality, if any man, no discrimination, if any man uh, thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And then in verse 38, it says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his innermost being, out of his belly, shall flow rivers of living water. Then in verse 39, it says, But they speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, but is now given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Christ is now glorified. That is uh, the spirit saturation. The Spirit of God will come upon you and will be within you. And then He'll saturate you in His irresistible power in Jesus' name. Let's come to chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 11. In chapter 8, verse 11, she said, No man, Lord, the Lord had said, As no man condemns you, when you come to Christ, all condemnation is gone. 
when you come to Christ, all the guilt and the guilty feeling, everything is gone. And Jesus said, as no man condemned you, she said, no man lodged. And Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. That's the miracle of stopping sin. The miracle of stop sinning. He said, I give you the power now. I give you the grace now. Go and sin no more. We're looking at chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 6. Chapter 9, we're looking at verse 6. When he has spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the, of the blind man with the clay and then in verse 7 in verse 7 and said unto him go wash in the pool of Siloam which is being interpreted by interpretation saying and he went his way therefore and washed and came seeing the blind eyes were opened every blind eye here will be opened and then if you are blind to your good, if you are blind to your provision, if you are blind to your progress, if you are blind to the great things God has prepared for you, it will open your eyes today. Amen. Number nine, spiritual sight, supernatural sight, is the miracle of supernatural sight. I come to chapter 10, verse 10. In chapter 10, verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy but i am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly are you there i said are you there that you will have life not death you'll have life i said not death you will not die prematurely you will not die another person's death you will move on in life. You have the life of God in you in Jesus' name. And then the day might have it more abundantly. I rejoice with you. Abundant life for you. Abundant life for you. From your inside. Anything that will just make you tired and weak as if I'm going to fall down and, and die. No, you will live spiritual life abundant life renewed life strengthened life that they might have life and have it more abundantly that's super abundant sufficiency super abundant sufficiency these are the things that the lord himself has promised that's what's going to do look at number chapter 11 there Chapter 11, we're looking at verse 35. In chapter 11, verse 35, it says, Jesus wept. Why? He had the power. He was going to raise Lazarus. He knew that Lazarus would rise again, but he had the great sympathizer. Every sorrow you go through, every problem you go through, don't think there's no super, uh, there's no uh, person to sympathize with me. There is no support. There is no companion. There's no friend. I'm not married yet. I am, you know, just lonely and alone. The Lord said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He cries when you cry. He's sorrowful when you're sorrowful. He came to that grave and he wept. Jesus wept. And then verse 39, in verse 39, Jesus said, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. Uh, for he had been dead four days. And then in verse 40, Jesus said uh, unto her, take, uh, in verse 40, in verse 40, look at what happened now. Jesus says unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldest believe, thou shalt see the glory of God. You see the glory of God. 
I said, you see the glory of God. And then in verse 41, and he took away the stone and uh, from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And then in verse 42, he now, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people we stand by, I said it that they may believe that thou hast sent me. I haven't said that then he said in verse 43, in verse 43, and when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. That power is still there today. What's your name? What's your name? Come forth. Out of that dungeon, come forth. Out of that grave, come forth. Out of that poverty, come forth. Out of that impossibility. And they sealed you there and they said, you'll never come out of that place. Take away that stone. Come forth in Jesus' name. Verse 44, and he and he that was dead came forth. He came forth. I am coming forth. What are you? I am coming forth. He came forth, bound, hand and foot, with the great clothes. And his face was bound, he bowed by a napkin. And Jesus said unto them, Lose him, let him go. Lose him and let him go. That's you. They will not keep on binding you. They will not keep on holding you down. Lose him and let him go. That 11 is superlative sympathy. Sympathy that went beyond just saying, oh, sorry. What a terrible condition. I'm sorry. What a terrible uh, bereavement. I'm sorry. But no, superlative. He sympathized, but then he had the power to say, Lazarus, come forth. Number 12 now, in John chapter 12, verse 24. John chapter 12, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth fruit. You'll bring forth fruit. Look at verse 26. In verse 26, if any man serve me, him and him, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Honor for you. Yeah. Honor from heaven coming upon your life. Yeah. That number 12 is self-sacrificing service. A wheat of corn falling into the ground and dying. And then bringing forth much fruit. Chapter 13. 13. Verse 5, after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was guarded. He was the master. He poured water into the bowl and then tied the towel around him he stooped down and he began to wash the feet of the disciples. And that's the work of the servant. Chapter 13, sublime servanthood. Sublime servanthood. Then in John chapter 14, we're reading from verse 12. John chapter 14 Verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me. Any believer in the house today? That's you. Brother, I say that's you. Sister, I say that's you. 
he that believeth on me. It says, the same works, the same works, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. What's that telling us? It's telling us, Savior and Saint, sameness. Sameness. What he has done, he passes his name unto you. And he says, with well, that name, what he has done, you will do. Savior, Saint, sameness. Then in verse 13, he tells us, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Then in verse 14, if ye ask, shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Make it personal. If I shall ask anything in his name, he will do it. Today, tonight, tomorrow, next week, every day of your life, if I shall ask anything in his name, he will do it. That is a decree from heaven. It will happen. God will always hear your prayer. Yeah. Chapter 15, we're looking at verse 8. It says, Hearing is my Father glorified, that she bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. You'll bear fruit. You'll bear more fruit. You'll bear much fruit in Jesus' name. Look at verse 16. In verse 16, ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit. My sister, your life will be fruitful. In the house of your husband, your life will be fruitful. My daughter there, your life will be fruitful. In the work of your hand, in the studies for your profession, you will succeed. My brother there, in your home there, taking care of your wife, taking care of your husband, you are going to be fruitful. There is no barrenness in your family anymore. You are fruitful in Jesus' name. As a soul winner, as a preacher of the word, you are going to be fruitful. He has chosen you, and he has ordained you, and he is sending you forth that you should bear fruit, and that your fruit shall remain, and that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, I will do it. That's chapter 15, soul winning success so we need success that's the miracle he has given us of his fullness that we all receive chapter 16 we're reading from verse 7 in chapter 16 verse 7 nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you the comforter will come to you. The spirit of truth will come to you. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it tells us how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come is a supportive spirit it will support in the divine assignment the lord has given you wisdom he'll give you strength he will give you power he will give you ability he will give you and it will guide you into all truth that is a supportive ministry and the supportive spirit the holy ghost will come to number 17 now in chapter 17, Jesus prayed. He 
And as Jesus prayed, he said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Then in verse 18, for their sakes, it says, As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Verse 19 says, And for their sakes, I set apart myself, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Then in verse 20, Neither pray I for thee is a load, but for them also we shall believe on me through their word. Verse 21 that they all may be one as thou father art in me and I in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe as we are one, as we are united, united in him and one in him and with him. The world will believe that thou hast sent me. In verse 22, he tells us, it says, And the glory which thou givest me, I have given unto them. Have you received glory? I said, have you received glory? The glory that the Father had given unto him, he has given unto you. What are you? You need to smile. You need to rejoice. And you need to be jubilant in the Lord that the glory given to Christ, he transferred that to you. You will not cry again. Your sorrow is taken away. And it says, The glory which thou gavest me, I have given them that they may be one as we are one. In verse 23, it tells us, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them, has loved them as thou hast loved me. That sure sanctification, sure sanctification. We're looking at chapter 18. In chapter 18, we're looking at it from verse 4. Chapter 18, from verse 4. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that shall come upon him, he went forth and said unto them, Who seek ye? Look at verse 5. In verse 5, they answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also will betray him stood with them and they were told in verse 6 in verse 6 as soon then as he had said unto them i am he they went backward and they fell to the ground you know if jesus wanted to escape the crucifixion the people that were sent to arrest him and to bring him for judgment and for crucifixion already when he said i am he they fell backwards and they fell to the ground and then in verse 7 look at verse 7 then ask he them again i said whom seek ye and he said jesus of nazareth look at verse 8 in verse 8 jesus answered i have told you that i am he if ye therefore, if ye seek for me, let these go. You know what that is? That is submissive sovereignty. He had sovereignty. He had power. Even to bring every one of them to the fall and to die. But as the sovereign one, he voluntarily gave himself as our substitute and he died for us. That is submissive sovereignty. And then in chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 4. Chapter 19, reading from verse 4. John, chapter 19, reading from verse 4. It tells us, Pilate, therefore, 
went forth again and saith unto them, Behold, I bring him forth to you, that ye may know that I find no fault in him. Sinless, spotless, and blameless, I find no fault in him. Look at verse 6. Then he tells us in verse 6, And when the chief uh, priest, uh, therefore, and the officers saw him, uh, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Take ye him, and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Blameless, spotless, and sinless, I find no fault in him. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, where they crucified him. They crucified him. How did they, how did they crucify him when there was no fault in him? Because he was our substitute. And it's a satisfactory substitute. He satisfied the justice of God. No fault, no sin, no spot, no blame of his own. Perfect. And yet, he surrendered himself as our substitute. That's why we can pray today and we can say, Oh Lord, you are my substitute. You are the final sacrifice. I surrender myself unto you. And because he had no sin of his own, he can now take all our sins away. And then he tells us in verse 30, in verse 30, he says, When Jesus therefore had received the vigor, he said, It is finished. He bowed, he said, and gave up the ghost. And then in chapter 20, verse 21, chapter 20, Verse 21, then said Jesus unto them, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Those were sent saints. Sent saints to do what the Savior I've been doing, I came to seek and to save that which was lost. And the Father sent me to do that in that same way. I'm sending you forth. Don't say I'm not a worker, I'm not a minister, I'm not appointed to do this or that. You're a child of God and you have been saved. That same salvation you've got, go and share with others, go and bear testimonies with others as the Father. I sent him, even so, as he sent you, saint says, and you are going to be successful in that soul winning business in Jesus' name. Now, chapter 21, John, chapter 21, reading from verse 4. John 21, reading from verse 4, but when. The morning was now calm. Jesus stood on the shore. And the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, And then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? And they answered him, No. And then Jesus told them, Cast your net there. And they did, and they caught a lot of fish. And if you have no meat yet, and no food yet, and no sustenance yet, Christ, risen Christ, resurrected Christ, has come to you today. Amen. Any food? No, Lord. Any meat? No, Lord. Any sustenance? No, Lord. Anything at home? No, Lord. All right, cast your net there. Surplus, supply will come to you. The sorrow of poverty, the sovereign of poverty will be cast away, taken away from your life in Jesus' name. And then after that, look at verse 15 now and verse 15. So when they are dying, he will not leave you hungry. He will not leave you thirsty. He'll provide enough for you. When they are dying, Jesus says unto Simon, Peter, 
Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He says unto him, Yea, Lord, yes, Lord, that knowest that I love thee. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep. He'll forget all your failures of the past. He'll forget all your wumbling of the past. He will forget all your weakness of the past. He will restore you. Amen. Back to life. Amen. Back to abundant life. Amen. Back to strength. And back to the ministry. And then he says, I trust you. You will not fail again. I trust you. You will not fall again. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. That's the miracle of steadfast seeker sender. Seeker sender. He sought them and then he sent them. He has sought you and he has found you. And he says now, go do the work I should have been doing if I were here. Now, that's receiving of the fullness of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've seen the fullness of his miracle from chapter 1 to chapter 21. And whatever your need is, all those needs are covered in all those chapters. We've seen John the Baptist. We've seen John the Beloved. We've seen Jesus Christ. Now, whosoever will, whosoever is thirsty, may come and take of the water of life freely and abundantly. And the blessings of God will fill your life to fullness today in Jesus' name. Are you there? Where are you? Why don't you rise up and say, Lord, all that is for me. Lord, all that is for me. Of his fullness, all that is for me. Of his goodness, all that is for me. Of his plenitude, all that is for me. Salvation, full salvation, all that is for me. Sanctification, sure sanctification, all that is for me. Supply, superabundant supply, all that is for me. Sonship and supernatural sonship, all that is for me supply and to turn your water into wine all that is for me and the symbolic serpent as uh, the serpent was lifted up on in the wilderness even so shall the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believers and the lord will not perish but have everlasting life you don't have any reason to perish life has come abundant life has come and the supernatural life has come eternal everlasting life has come open your mouth and tell the lord oh lord here am i give me of your supernatural supply It's available for you. The sick, healed, recovered, succored. Soul satiation that is satisfy you completely. Spirit saturation. It fills you with the spirit. Saturates you with the spirit. Empowers you. In the spirit and it gives you the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost you cannot say we've never so much as such if there be any Holy Ghost you have heard and it's yours and then it comes away and it says it takes condemnation away from you neither do I condemn you but go and sin no more the miracle of sin stopping in our lives. Supernatural sight, born blind, or we are blind to your goodness, you're blind to the provision, you're blind to what the Lord has come to bless you with. You'll supernaturally open your blind sight. So you can now see a supernatural sufficiency of everything you need, 
supernatural sufficiency of the grace of God, of the life of God, of the power of God, of the Spirit of God, of everything you need for every part of your life. And he has superlative sympathy. It's by your side. His compassions, they fail not. His companionship, that will not fail. His support, that will not fail. And if there's any stone that laid on you there, he says, take care with the stone. And then, life. Life. Life, heavenly life, will come to you right there. And the corn of which you fall into the ground and die so as to bring forth much fruit. Self-sacrificing service. Available. And then the sublime servanthood. You wash other people's feet. Don't just stand as a great man. Don't just stand there at the highest of the people stoop down lean put the water in the bowl serve the people and do the ministry of the servant sublime servanthood and a savior sage sameness the work I do ye shall do and greater works than these shall lead you because I go to the Father and whatsoever you shall ask in my name whatsoever what are you asking? spiritual blessing spiritual benefit whatsoever you shall ask in my name that you will do that the Father may be glorified in Him. And He sends you forth, He says to bear witness, and He'll give you the soul winning success and a supportive spirit. He'll reveal Himself to you more and more. Show sanctification through and through your heart. Your soul, your mind, your purge, your purify, your sanctify, and make you holy. It's making intercession for you. Neither pray I for these alone, but for all them that shall believe on my name. And he is a suffering one. That submitted himself. He said, No man took my life from me. I laid down my life so you can be saved. It's a substitute. Sinless, blameless, spotless, satisfactory substitute. And I have sent you for, as my Father has sent me. Even so, have I sent you. He has sought you. The seeker, sender. The seeker, sender. He will not leave you to go astray. Steadfast. Seeking for you. And he's found you today. And he's sending you forth to go and live the victorious life. And go and enjoy all the provision. That the Lord has made available for you. In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> Everybody has said, In Jesus' name we pray. Of his fullness will you all receive. Amen. Everything you need, everything supplied, spiritual, 
material, physical, professional, for today, for tomorrow, for your life, available for you. What are you? Raise up that hand, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for the abundant provision, sufficient provision, supernatural provision you have for every one of us. And I pray that everyone without exception will receive of your fullness in Jesus' name. Plant our feet on a sure foundation. And the Father said, the fire, the focus, we ought to have grant unto everyone. Amen. All the dullness, all the weakness of our lives, in our spirit, in our soul, wipe everything away in Jesus' name. Amen. In life, make us forthright. Amen. In life, make us steadfast. Amen. In life, make us courageous in you, in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray that as you have brought us into the kingdom as sons, as soul winners, as ministers, and as the declarers of the word of God, strength abundant, supply superabundant, you grant your every one of us. Satan will not reign over any of our lives. Sickness will not reign over any of our lives. All the things we have cried about before, no more crying. Amen. Victory. Amen. Success. Amen. Power. Amen. Being a conqueror. Amen. Make us all overcomers in Jesus' name. Amen. And the blood you shed for every one of us will avail for every soul. And avail in every situation. Yeah. And as are sending us forth to go and do what you did when you are here on earth, we're going forth, we're going to do it. Yeah. We will succeed. Yeah. Every mountain before every one of us will clear out of the way. Yeah. Brother, go out and succeed now. Yeah. Sister, go out and succeed yeah. now. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength all the days of your life in Jesus' name. Confirm your blessings upon everyone. In Jesus' name we pray.